I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Power Edge R730 XD. And specifically in this video, we are going to focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Power Edge R730 XD. Do us a favor if you find anything in this video useful, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. This video is going to be specifically focused on memory for the R730 XD. It takes DDR4 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. You can use a number of different speeds. You can use uh, 2133, 2400, or up to 2666. And technically, you can even throw in uh, 2933 or 3200 speed, but I will note 2666, 2933, 3200, all that is going to clock down to 2400. And that's only if you have V4 procs. It'll clock all the way down to 2133 if you have V3 procs. So really there's uh, no advantage to uh, some of those higher speed uh, modules. Uh, 2133 and 2400 is really what you're getting on the speed side for uh, the R730 XD. Uh, as far as the different DIMM sizes, you can go as low as a 4 gig, an 8 gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, and believe it or not, all the way up to 128 gig. And there's a catch there. You can only use the 64 gig and the 128 gig with one type of RAM, and that brings us to, hey, what type of RAM does the R730 XD accept? Well, there's two types of RAM. There's ECC registered, known as an RDIM, and there's load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out at 768 gigabytes using 2432 gigs at 2400 speed. Whereas with load reduce, you can get four times the scalability and you can get three terabytes using 2,428 gigabytes at 2,400 speed. So now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the types of RAM, the different sizes, how, how much we can max out, uh, I want to show you actually how to install it, uh, show you the different channels inside uh, so that if you're not, not maxing it out and you need to know, hey, what DIMM slots do I put it in to maximize performance, we'll show you how to do that right now. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, got my ESD gear on and we are safe to work inside the machine. Uh, I went ahead and laid out everything that you're going to need for this upgrade. And it's just that, just the memory. And so I would recommend, though, having a tray, um, especially one like this where um, there's extra space. So when you're removing your old RAM, which we were done for this, but if you're removing your old RAM, I recommend putting it right into a tray immediately. Uh, this is a slotted tray. Uh, when you buy from us, this is how it will ship. Uh, and I recommend keeping it uh, just in case you need stuff uh, in the future to uh, to put stuff in or move stuff around. Uh, these are always good to have handy laying around your data center. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. Uh, what we're going to do is just make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open. Very, very simple to get inside. Now, you will note uh, that in order to get to the DIMM uh, slots themselves, we do need to remove the air baffle. Uh, the air baffle is actually very convenient and handy. I like to put it to the side uh, because it labels everything. It might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but it says it shows you this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. It shows you all the memory channels as far as A1, A2, uh, which we'll show you here in a second as well. Uh, but they're all labeled on here, which is just a very convenient um, thing to have on the air baffle. So again, you can stick it to the side. Uh, now, in order to do this upgrade, you don't have to remove the fan bank. We're going to do it just so that you have a, uh, a better view here of the, uh, the installation. So we'll just put this to the side uh, and removing the fan bank is very easy regardless. So you'll see we have a lot more access to the back as well. So even if you're at home and you want to do it, it will uh, give you some more access to the um, the back tabs here. So, all right, as we discussed, this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. Uh, CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. What's really important about that is that helps you to understand the memory channels. And it's important to understand the memory channels for this upgrade because that's really how you're going to install them if you're not maxing it out. So, um, you will notice there are four memory channels per CPU. And within each memory channel, there are three DIMM slots per channel. And Dell has uh, color-coded them to make it easy for us. So white is the actual start of a memory channel. Black is the second slot in the channel. And green is the third slot in the channel. And again, this is important because this is how you will actually install your DIMMs. So I'm going to start over here and show you uh, this white one that's popped forward. This is A1. This next white one over here is A2. Now you come around to the outside over here and this is A3 and this is A4. So again white being the start of all of the channel all the white slots would be where you would install your DIMM. So let's say you have uh, two CPUs and you're putting in 
8 memory modules, 8 16 gigs, 8 32 gigs, something like this. You would want to put them in all the white slots before you put them in any of the blacks or any of the greens, all the white slots. And people ask, well, why do I do that? Well, really, it's just about performance. What you want to do is you don't want to overload one memory channel and have that channel doing all the work or a couple of channels doing all the work and a bunch of other channels aren't doing anything. You want a nice, even distribution of work across all the channels uh, and they manage the load properly, better performance overall. So it's really just that simple. Uh, so we come back around. Um, this is going to be uh, A5, A6, A7, a8, come back around, A9, A10, A11, A12, and that's your 12 dim slots, uh, and then you can see the three different channels. So again, for most people at home that are using this, I imagine you have two CPUs, so again, if you were going to install it, you would um, go through the first uh, A1 through A4, and you'd actually want to then come over here to B1, B2, B3, before, before again you touch any of the black slots over here or any of the green slots over here. Um, but really that, you get the, the point that we're trying to make. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually install a few dims for you right now. Uh, one of the things that I recommend is actually popping all your tabs open. Um, I just like to have everything ready for me in advance so that when I go to install the dims I don't have uh, anything fighting me or pushing back on me when I'm trying to do it or uh, not being able to fully focus on the module. Another thing I want to uh, point out, there is a notch right here in the middle of the uh, the leads on the memory module. Uh, that notch is known as a key. That key is very important because it's not perfectly centered. It's just off a little bit, um, which is important because you have to make sure you line it up properly. And if you, if we actually scroll in right here, we zoom in, you'll notice um, on this side, this little uh, black piece that's uh, in the middle where the key goes into um, on the dim slot, it is not the same depending on which dim you're in. It's over here versus over here. So you do have to flip flop depending on uh, where you are at. And that's when I see people, they're just in a good groove, they're installing, and they don't realize it flip flops from here to here or over here to here. And they, they jam it in and they accidentally damage uh, the leads on the module or they damage the dim slot and then the dim slot's broken and they potentially have to get a new motherboard. And none of these are an issue when to run into off of just simply not lining something up. So I kind of stress the point, um, but again, uh, it's a very simple mistake. Uh, so just make sure you line it up properly. So in this case for A1, we need to line it up like this. All right, and the next thing I want to point out is you'll see I've put the module down, the modules uh, in the socket, but technically it's not fully in the socket. So what you want to hear are these two clicks where the tabs actually come into the side of the module and pull it down so the leads are fully in the uh, dim, slot, uh, dim slot itself. So you want to hear these two clicks. And those two clicks let you know uh, that the module is fully inserted. So that was A1. Now we're going to do A2. And even though we're going to max this out, um, I just wanted to show the users at home uh, how you would do this if you were going to uh, just put in uh, 4 or 8 or 16 DIMMs, uh, how would you do that, right? So that's kind of what I'm focused on for, for the users at home right now. So again, click, click. Make sure you have it all lined up properly. So that would be the first four slots. Now, again, if you had two CPUs, you are going to come over here uh, to um, to the white uh, over here. If you don't, if you're only running with one, then you'd start using the uh, the blacks, and you'd go to A5. Uh, but we're again, we're going to keep uh, on over here. So make sure you have it lined up. We're going to going to go to uh, B1. B2, swing around over here to B3, which is going to be right next to A1, and then finish it off with B4. So this is, again, proper way to do it with uh, eight modules with two CPUs. If you were going to put in 16 modules, uh, then you would start uh, filling up all the black slots, leave the greens empty, and so on and so forth. So I think you get the general point. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, fill this whole thing up, and be right back. 
all right so you can see we've uh, fully loaded it up it was a, a really simple upgrade uh, overall uh, this is one of the ones I always tell people if you're new to uh, installing RAM this is uh, one of the easiest upgrades that you'll do um, one thing I do also like to recommend at the end uh, double check that all your tabs on the memory modules are fully in every once in a while I'll, I'll pull I'll do it right now you see one will be kind of jutting out just a little bit like where you, hopefully you can see it. I don't know if you can but be jutting out just a very little bit and that module is actually not fully inserted and that will register as a um, as a failure just because it's out a little bit so I just like to make sure everything is, is fully flush and then you are good to go alright uh, if you made it this far hey do us a favor click that like smash that subscribe and if you guys use uh, R730XDs in your data center or really uh, any um, Dell or HP or Super Micro servers we would sure love the opportunity to earn your business uh, please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com uh, we have a ton of 730XDs in stock uh, and we'd love to help you out take care thanks for stopping by